everybody, Rebels of Cloud 9 here, and today we're going to be building the new tooled Fokker E2 Eindecker from Airfix in 70 second scale. This was sent to me by Jerry, so thank you very much for this because I'm not able, this still isn't out yet here in uh, North America, at least in Canada. It's still not in my hobby store yet, so I've got one, and uh, this was kind of on my list of. I don't know why, I just felt like building some World War I stuff, and this was at the top of my list. Um, so yeah, it's kind of interesting, there's two new World War I kits from Airfix this year, and this is one of them. It's just a little strange that they all of a sudden just did these two. Nice, but strange. And uh, I'm very much looking forward to building this one, so let's take a look. We've got a painting guide on the back, I haven't seen that much as much lately. They've kind of been doing open box tops with a painting guide and the instructions. So everything looks pretty good. I'm pretty sure I have all the paints I need for this one, hopefully. And uh, yeah, let's take a look inside of here. And I recently found out that the, the, I actually found this out yesterday, that all the shipping snafus are actually done by one company. So there's a reason why stuff isn't getting out and with the actual problems with um hornby at the at the moment or is it humbrol humbrol sorry humbrol at the moment so stuff isn't getting out of the country as well as they would like but anyways uh i did do a bit of an inbox review of this one but i'll do it again simply because it's a pretty awesome kit so let me see if i can focus in on here okay man thank you so again we got the nice braiding detail i quite like that it's going to look quite nice um here we have the engine, looks very very good detailing in there, even has a fantastic pilot, I'm not sure if I'm going to use him yet, oh, sorry, uh, I might just, might, I might not, I haven't made up my mind yet, and I love the Spandau Maxim machine gun sitting there, it looks great, looks, that's, I think that's about the best you're going to get at a kit this price without it being photo etched because it does have all the little grills, um, air vents there cut out, and it looks it just looks fantastic. Um, there's a little bit of interior detail, which I like. Not, not a terrible amount, but it's more than enough. You know, these were pretty bare-bone um, aircraft to begin with. So, um, here we have the wings, and they even have little pegs on there. So we can, um, we can rig those if we'd like. Don't have to, of course. It's an option. I am going to try rigging it with that, with my new uh, Easy Line. I want to give this a test before I do it. Use it on another project. Actually, a couple projects. <laughs> Anyways, um, we have little bits and doodads and little innards and what have you of the rest of the aircraft. We also get two propellers, which is quite nice. So I'm not sure if you use both and. Or we're going to get another kit with uh, that uses that. So let's take a look. Put those to the side for the moment. And let's take a look. So, yeah, construction is pretty simple. It's all Humbrol colors. Which I'll have to use my painting guide. Which I think is somewhere here on my desk. Um... Propeller turns with the engine. There's a way they cooled them. And yeah, pretty simple. So yeah, you only use the one propeller. So I guess we are going to get another option. Or perhaps it's in the dogfights kit. There's one where you get both of the World War I aircraft. So I'm not sure about that. Now, this is what I really love. Um, yeah, bravo on Airfix's behalf. Uh, for doing this. This is a rigging diagram and it's quite nicely laid out. I'm very happy with this. The uh, the model of the, the aircraft is kind of a lighter grayish color and then all the lines are um, sorry, are deep black. Would have been nicer if they made them like a, an odd color like neon green or something but this looks very very good. Um, so this is going to make life much easier for me. There's quite a bit of rigging to do for this little guy. So hopefully I will be able to do it with these fat thumbs. Yeah, they get in the way of everything. And these sausage fingers get in the way. Anyways, uh, let's see, the decals, are the decals cartographed? Are they? Aren't they? 
We'll throw this away if they aren't. We won't build the model. We will. This will be our final stand. It doesn't say anywhere. Ah, oh, they're not cartograph. Deckel schemes and pack design. Ah ha ha ha. I'm not exactly thrilled because part of the joy of Airfix kits are cartograph. But you can see it says it right there. Oh no! Whatever are we going to do, Mr. Frodo? Well, Sam, we're just going to go ahead and build it anyways. Um, it looks, they look great. Uh, I've got nothing, nothing, compl I'm complaining about it, but I'm actually not. Um, you got kind of a bit of a gold foil one on that one there, which I love it when they do that, because I have, I have no idea how they print, like, this metallic-like, um, maybe it isn't gold foil, maybe it is, no, it is, it is gold. Like, you can see in the circles here, those are, those are gold foil as well. Focus. Yeah, so you can kind of see it there. They look great. Uh, the perfect register. I love all these little ones here because you can actually read them. If I had a magnifying glass, uh, I'd be able to show that better. But yeah, you can actually read all that. They just look great. They look brilliant. And so I think I'm going to try these bands. You know, usually I would airbrush those, but nah, it's kind of a smaller model. I don't know if I really want to do it. I don't know. I don't even know if I have a color like this to airbrush with. It's kind of an orangey yellow. Oh my goodness, I never realized that. Take off the white. Oh, those are like my family colors. Huh? Funny. Now I have to use it. Okay, I'm going to go and take a look at the first part of the instructions here. And um, I'm going to put these away in a safe place. I like to use this. This is just in case, because decals are fragile, I have this, yeah, it's an old geometry kit, and I throw spare parts in it, but when it comes to the decals, I like to put them in here for safekeeping. So you can see I've got quite a few in there. Now, I don't have to have them in the box, rattling around, getting scratched and bent and beat up, and anyways, uh, let's go get building. Pretty excited about this kit. This is gonna be very fun. So once again with these instructions, they don't have uh, painting colors like in the front like they used to. And yes, last time I said this, I said that it doesn't have painting colors and a lot of you assumed that I meant it doesn't have painting guide for the back of the box. Well, yes, well, there are the colors for this, but there are no colors for this. What is 118? What is 95? What is 94? 62? 85? What are all these colors that I need? Well, that's where I have one of these. Da -da -da -da. Humbrol painting accessories, and it's basically a big giant poster of all the paints. Come here. Well, so far, I don't know. I don't know if they've made any new paints recently. Well, I guess they have with some of their rail colors. I'm not sure. Malachite Green RC. 409. I have to buy a bottle or two of that for my dad, actually. Oh, got to remember to do that. Um, one of the things I would really love to uh, commend Airfix on, uh, it's in all seriousness, is they've kept a lot of the parts big. This is a very tiny aircraft, and like this thing right here, part B9, it's big. It's pretty darn thick. Like, it's, it's obviously out of scale, and i much rather appreciate that, because I've seen a lot of companies that make stuff to scale and it's they're so hard to put together in the end of the day you know like here's the steering column i'm betting this middle section is supposed to be hollow easy to break you know i had that problem with the um zero you guys always write to me about the the zero talking about how the control columns is broken i've yet to have one where they didn't break <laughs> to be honest so i'm not going to put everything together here Ugh, let's get rid of all this dried out glue and this, don't want to have any of this accidentally get its way onto the model. I've had that happen before. Never fun. And so, yeah, let's just add a little bit. No, 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 no. let's glue this one here. This will be easier to do.
think a little rationally here. Okay, so that fits in the back here. So now I'm going to have to do a lot of painting after this, and I'm just going to use... I'm just going to look at the picture, I'm just going to use whatever I have as a, a closest approximate to uh, a Tamiya paint and something like that, so then I won't have to worry about it. So I'm going to put him there. Come on. I do have it the right way. I hope. Oh no. No, I don't. Okay. So the, the curved bent legs go in the front. Okay, there we go. Actually fits better now, so. And then just a little extra thin on each of the legs. I'll sit here and let this cure properly uh, before I move on. Like, here's the seat, and I would, you know, glue this on, but this needs to be a different color. So, but this will just fit. About like that. So I've got some really good detail for the interior here. The control stick goes right there. And uh, yeah, once you build all this, then we can put the sidewall on. That won't be for a little while. After, like I said, after I get everything painted. So I'm gonna let this dry. I'm going to paint everything. The instructions are just wonderful. And look at this. They just have everything identified and labeled out for you in this nice uh, side section there. So, yeah, paint number 62, paint number 94, 94, give it a wash. We're off to a good start. I'm using XF60 Dark Yellow. And this is something I've been doing quite a bit lately, <clears throat> is just using a bit of paint retarder. I'm just mixing it up into the cap like this. To my uh, paint brushing, all the more fun actually. A lot more, a lot simpler. And let's try this off. There we go. So I was looking up on Wing Not Wings website the colors that they recommend. <clears throat> and they actually recommend to paint the entire thing dark yellow. Now, I've airbrushed dark yellow quite a few times and I don't agree with it. So I'm going to try something else, I think. And uh, I'm not saying that they're wrong or anything like that, but personally I just don't want that. I'd like something a bit Something a bit brighter. These aircraft seem to be much more. Yeah, you know, like that looks. That looks quite dark. That's not the right color. Do I paint that as well? Yep. And one thing. I'll point this out in just a second here. On the lip right here, there's a bit of a lip right there on the bottom. For that, uh, you cut off a little bit of the sprue, and then I just took my sanding stick and went like this along that lip. Filed it down nice and smooth, and so it's ready to go now. So this is working out very well. Do that side. And then I have to paint the back of the wall a different color, which is a little odd, but whatever. So, this is probably going to take me about, yeah, I'd say about two layers to do properly. And uh, then I'm going to go ahead and paint all the little interior details and, and things like that. Like the control columns. Paint that black. That's probably what they would have had. Or silver. Probably black, though. Again, Wingnut Wings website is pretty pretty good for reference material in there. 
and they're not too afraid to to show their reference to the rest of the world you should get some companies so anyways so yeah this will just take me again another coat in a little while and weathering it up and distressing and we'll be able to put the cockpit pieces together hopefully fairly quick everything's painted up and I think it looks pretty good it's very again very very basic there's really not a lot of stuff in here the black paint is still a little glossy because it's drying but uh, I think it looks pretty good the last thing I'd like to do is because you can see inside the cockpit you're going to be able to see inside of it I would like to add photo etch seat belts but I don't have any so I will yeah pretend that they're there why don't you make them out of scotch tape or tamia tape or tape tape uh, I don't quite like it as much uh, I've seen a lot of people do it and it looks really good but when I do it I'm not happy with my results so um, that's why I'm using tamia panel and accent color brown and I'm just going to add some into all these nice little recesses and everything. I'm just going to cover up everything actually. And then in a little while I'll go through with the mineral spirits and, and splatter it around properly. But uh, yeah, I just like to give it again just a little bit of something in there so it's not all just one monotone. What is this color? Dark yellow. So I'll just Oops. Actually, that did exactly what I wanted it to. So it looks pretty, pretty nice. It's a little iffy. You know, I know a lot of people are going to be like, that's not nice at all. Well, oh, like I said, I'll clean it up in about half an hour or so. Um, I get questions from time to time about how long can you, you leave this stuff on uh, a model. Um... I have seen, I've personally, I have actually left it on for about, um, it's about four or five months. Uh, I left this stuff on um, a model, and that was before I took it off. And it took a while for it to actually scrub off, but it, it did come off. But um, I don't know. I'd say, you know, wait two days for it to really bake in that's if you want it to really stick but for me I'm just doing it kind of as a wash and like I said I'm just gonna take mineral spirits and um, like this brush and I'm just gonna tidy it up and clean off a bunch of it and uh, yeah then I'm gonna put all the halves together I might actually even just leave it like this if I like it enough you know who knows we'll see sometimes it dries and it does kinda what you wanted it to do and uh, so then it's like, don't even worry about it. So, like I said, I will wait and see. I'll put the halves together. And then... It's time for the engine and all that jazz. But I don't want to mount the engine yet. I kind of want to do that last. <laughs> I'll figure that out in a minute when I get there. So, yeah, let's let this dry. And I'm probably going to have to fill in the seam line on top so these two halves go together I'm I'm, I'm betting it's it's gonna need it and uh, yeah I just better do it <laughs> do it anyways so so I was actually quite happy with how the brown turned out I was just, like I thought it would be a bit much but I think it actually looks pretty good my camera's not gonna pick up on it quite as well as I'd like with the shadows and everything but um, yeah, I boxed everything up in there. It's a good fit, but it is complicated. Um, I got a whole bunch of fingerprints all over it. I've got to go clean up before I fill it in and stuff. It was just uh, everywhere it seemed. I was just pressing, getting a thumbprint or fingerprint somewhere. Um, I did find a bit of a problem. This is the top here. You're supposed to just paint it black and brown, and that's a fuel tank, I believe, and they want you to paint it brown. Which I don't quite agree with as much, so I just paint it silver since you don't actually see it anyways. Um, but you put it on here, and oops, I just smudged the paint. Oh well, 
Uh, see, so you put it on here, and there are the pins right there. So I thought maybe those would be hidden by the wings. Uh, no. No, that's not the case whatsoever. So, hopefully, I don't, I don't, it doesn't look like there's anything that covers them up. Maybe there is. Hold on. I just thought of that. Hmm. Now you got these sides here. What is this? Um, B11 and B5. But they're not, they're not big enough to, you know, completely cover it. So, yeah, you get those... You get those pegs in there, unfortunately. So I'm gonna have to. I don't know. It, 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 that's gonna be a bit of a tough one to fill in and and sand down because it's very very close to a lot of raised uh, detail, and I I don't want to erase the raised detail. So I'm just gonna go like this and get all this down, and then I can. Yeah, I can press it like this. There we go. So yeah, having extra thin has been incredibly helpful in this on this build. So what I'm going to do now, uh, I might assemble... No, I think I'll leave the landing gear for a little while. Um, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to putty this up in the back here. And uh, this is still drying a little bit. I'd like it to cure a little more. And I'm going to putty this up, sand it down... And um, that's going to take a few days for it to cure properly. I don't know what that hole is there. Maybe that's a fuel tank. Hmm. Who knows? Ah, anyways, it's so small. I'm not too worried that I didn't paint that brown instead of silver. Um, this, air this aircraft is not one of my specialties, which I should probably go and do some research. to admit that on camera. You moron. All right, fine. <laughs> Whatever. I admit it, I don't know. So yeah, to clean up the um, thumbprints and stuff, I'm just using some 1000 grit sandpaper and just going at it like that. And that's, that's actually cleaning it up really well, too. So that'll take me, this will take, like, again, like I said, a few days to dry. But it looks pretty good, and the fit is, is very good. It's just a little fussy. And these little pegs here, they're not supposed to be. They don't go into anything, but they're not supposed to be broken. Stay! Maybe I'll coat them in super glue or something. Anyways, that's the plan for now. So it's been like two weeks. Um, honestly, about two weeks since I was working on this. Um, stuff got in the way, and I just kind of put it off to the side. But last night I gave it a gloss coat. Nice and shiny. And I put on the top here. So what I'm going to do... This is ridiculous. There we go. That's better. Uh, hopefully this will be better. Scene. Okay. Um, let's see, I put on that top bar. Come on. Oh, come on. I spent half my time doing crap like this, isn't I? Um, so this needs to be cemented pretty securely if you're going to rig it. Um, and then the next is the landing struts and all that jazz so let's figure out where these all go I'm leaving these unpainted so that the plastic will hopefully uh, bond to them stronger so this goes like a little cannot fit like that this is not a kit I would ever say to a beginner, oh yeah, sure, pick this one up, it's easy. <laughs> it's it's uh, it's quite a difficult little model because of these tiny pieces. It's not bad or anything like that, that's not what I'm trying to say. Um, I'm just saying, for, for someone who's never built one before, uh, I, don't, I don't think they'd have the most fun time <laughs> as, as some other people would. So this does fit in here, like, ah, like that, okay. So I'm going to paint that all <clears throat> green in a moment here. Um, these ones go in like that. So the bottom struts. But wait, how do they 
fit. I'm gonna glue this down because I'll, I'll probably still have. I'm gonna gamble on the fact that I'll I'll still have time to wiggle it about. Okay. Oh, this goes this way, so it's kind of forward more. Okay. This goes, my goodness. It's not a bad system they design. It is a bit fiddly, but it's, I'm really pleased with the engineering quality. It's really good. There and there. I'm going to leave the cap off and you might see something funny in a moment. I hope not because I really don't want to bump it off. Okay. And that's actually not in the pegs. So let's do that. Do that. And for the heck of it, there. There. And there. Okay. Let's do this thing. Yeah, don't drop it on the floor. Because we need this right now. Okay. Come on. You can fit in. Okay. Hold on. Okay. Yeah. This needs to fit in here. Like that. Don't know how well this is picking up, so I apologize. And then it fits into the back. Okay. Wow. I am a little amazed of how well all of this just fit. Okay. This was, uh, surprisingly, quite surprisingly better, much better, uh, than the Hellcat, <laughs> if you can believe it. You remember the troubles I had with that one in getting those to fit. This was like nothing. Okay, so that's down. Um... I'm going to make sure I got the angle correct. Yeah, it does stick out forward a little bit. All right. Awesome. I'm still amazed how how perfect that fits. It's so it's just such a good fit. Very very cool. Um Yeah, no troubles with those whatsoever. Except now, I pushed on them too hard. There we go, back to normal. I'm gonna leave this alone to dry for, well, the rest of the day, probably. I really wanna let this secure. I think the only thing I'm gonna add is the tail um, strut there in the back. And uh, yeah, I'll be back later. Whew, that was quite entertaining, huh? I still can't get over that engineering. Absolutely perfect.